So um, the wellness visit is different from a problem-focused visit. So we actually are entitled um, by our, our CMS, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, to have an annual wellness visit at once a year that should be um, free of a copay. So you, you can go in, you can schedule an annual wellness visit and um, have that done at once a year. That, that is allowed. Most, in, most in institutions um, may combine that with a problem-focused visit, but it doesn't have to be. And now the, so a problem-focused visit where we go to see her, our healthcare provider with a problem, with an issue. So something um, adverse is happening. We have a, a, a headache, we are, blood glucose is out of control, uh, we have pains in our legs. So that would be a problem-focused visit. So the reason we're going to see uh, a health coming to see us healthcare providers because there is a problem. So that's a problem focused visit. This is an annual wellness exam. Um, and the difference between the problem focused visit and the um, annual well wellness e exam, the most important is that there is no physical exam at an annual wellness visit. It's for preventive health, preventive health care education and teaching, um, for screenings, um, for uh, vaccinations to make sure that adults are up to date because adults also get vaccination, not just children or um, teenagers, but um, older adults are also, there are certain vaccinations, vaccines that we should be getting also. Um, so an annual wellness exam is um, a preventative health exam. Um, the only physical part of it is having the vital signs done, the temperature, blood pressure, um, calculating the body mass index. Um, that's the only physical part of it. The rest of it is um, as I said, teaching, screenings, vaccines, um, teaching the family, speaking to the caregiver, developing a relationship, um, having their, their que other questions answered that's not related to an acute illness or acute condition that's happening with them. Um, so we have, of course, past medical history. We have history of present illness, what's happened with them since the last time we saw them. And again, no physical exam, but we do do vital signs. And if the vital signs are abnormal, then it changes from an annual wellness exam, it becomes a problem-focused visit, and the annual wellness exam would be rescheduled at another time. So we're not ignoring abnormals that may, be, may come up from having the vital signs done. Um, cognitive capacity, neurology, um, respiratory, so we go through all the systems. Functional ability, are they able to um, independently take care of their independent activities of daily living or their daily um, activities, or their regular activities of daily living, and I will um, address that um, later in the presentation. So their functional ability, their functional status, again polypharmacy. So polypharmacy is not only done at the annual wellness exam, it's supposed to be done every visit, even a problem focused visit, we should do um, a medication reconciliation. So every visit, every time, we should do a medication reconciliation. Having the patient tell us what medications they're on, not us telling the patient what's on our electronic medical record. And if the patient cannot pronounce it, have them spell it. We need to know the names. We need to know the dosages, milligrams, micrograms, drops, um, units, and the interval that they, the, they're supposed to be taking it. A lot of um, patients or community residents from doing the medication reconciliation realize that they're not taking it at the right interval that's prescribed. And also it's a, a catch a less embarrassing catch of patients that are um, of low literacy to no literacy or patients that are unable to read their primary language. So if English is not their primary language and the medication is in their primary language but they're still unable to read the label, that does not help the patient. So this is also a catch from new medica medication reconciliation. We're able to identify patients that are unable to read their primary language. Um, a screen of nutrition, is there food insecurity? Are they able to um, prepare or have a balanced meal at least once a day, the minimum, but hopefully more? Um, uh, gastrointestinal review, when was your last colonoscopy? So age-specific health screenings. Um, are, you, are they still sexually active? And yes, older adults and community residents are still sexually active. An older adult is defined as um, a person age 55 and older, a senior is defined as a person age 65 and older, that's where you get your benefits, you start getting your, um, your Medicaid benefits, um, your half, your bus passes, so that's considered a senior, that's 65 and older, but adults 55 and over are considered to be older adults, and yes, they're still sexually active, so we need to screen them 
uh, find out if they are, are they practicing safe sex, um, if they've had a, a sexually transmitted infection, has it been treated, is it untreated, because that could also affect mentation. Um, so that's why we're also doing the screening and, of course, teaching, teaching, teaching education. Uh, musculoskeletal assessments, are they, again, coming back to function? Do they require assistive devices to get around? Um, they're having a balance and gait problems. Are there risks for fall? Uh, do they have a high risk for falling because they have balance and gait problems? Are they supposed to be using assistive devices but may not be using it, or maybe it's not in function in working order? Um, osteoporosis screen strength, um, uh, incontinence or uh, urine incontinence and fecal incontinence or bowel and bladder. Are they wearing incontinence underwear? Are they required to wear incontinence underwear? And that also affects sleep if they're getting up at night, nocturia, to go to the bathroom, it, that's affecting their sleep and decreasing um, their restful sleep. Their psychosocial um, 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 environments at home what is happening in their house, which I'll cover also. Their sexual health, which I just mentioned. Their functional status, which is different from their functional ability. Employment and finances, is every, what's happening there? Are there issues? Is, are there deficits? Um, again, preventive health and wellness, teaching, education, spirituality, coping. What's their coping system? Do they have support? Um, how, what, how do they cope with stress? Is there someone there they could speak to? Or do they need us, to, uh, the providers, to, to um, make referrals um, and provide other resources for them? And family and leisure, most definitely important. Sleep hygiene, as I said, most important. Their mental health, scre we screen for mental health. Life stressors, relationship problems, sexual health problems, or just sexual health in general. Employment and finances, the dynamics of their family. Are they the primary caregiver? Are, are they living alone, but they need more assistance? Um, are they able to take care of themselves while living alone? Are they um, at risk for domestic abuse and violence? Are older adults, seniors, are they being neglected, um, uh, uh, receiving emotional, verbal, or for physical abuse, actual physical abuse? So that's a screening for that also. Um, eating disorders, uh, use of cigarettes, um, alcohol, illicit or illegal substance use or abuse or dependency, um, support system, as I said, who is their support system? Do they have a support system? If they don't, do they need to have there? Should they have a support system? Maybe it, we need to refer them to other resources. Uh, how are they coping? Um, and counseling and referral as indicated by all the screening that um, has gone before. So these are the components of an annual wellness, wellness exam. It is a longer exam um, and it needs to be scheduled by the, um, your, your practice as such because, as I said, it does include screening, everything else, and, of course, patient teaching and education and um, periods for questions and answers from the patient and caregiver or the family. This is um, our review of system that we use on our service. Um, so patients come in every visit, we screen them for what's happening, and this is entered into our electronic medical record. So um, this is one example of um, a screening tool that's used, our screening instrument that's used uh, for um, with interval, interval visit from the last visit to this, what's happened, to compare what's happened. Um, is there been a deficit, or increased deficit, or has there been an improvement in the patient's condition? And it goes, as I said, it's a system review, so from head to toe system review including severe stress.